Our children may be dismissed to Children's Church. As they go, you can turn to John chapter 11. We're looking at things uh, going toward Easter, and I asked the Lord for some creativity. You can't go wrong with the Easter story, but you know there are a lot of times that we just, we know the stories and God gives us a different way to look at it as we're approaching Easter. And um, my, on a test that we give to prospective ministers, it says, because Jesus needed no one to give him life, he was, and blank, blank, blank. One of the answers is eternal, and the other one is self-existent. Self-existent is the answer in case, I just gave you the answer in case you ever take the test. And, uh, but you know, when we think about eternal, you and I who know the Lord have eternal life already now. It was just with my brothers and we were dealing with some things about my mother's death and I thought about life. She is never more alive than she is today. In the presence of the Lord. But in John chapter 11, you see Jesus interacting with some friends, some people he likes. Probably all of us know the story about Lazarus dying, Mary and Martha being there and wondering where Jesus was. But I'm going to just read two verses that are pivotal. Verses 25 and 26. One of the seven I am's that Jesus declares. Verse 25, Jesus said unto her, being Martha, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, I'm going to translate this a little different, has life, even though he were dead. Never stops living, even though his body dies. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Hey, Martha, do you believe this? My question to us is, hey, church, do we believe it? Do we believe it? Because if you get the right idea about living, you won't be worried about dying. I'm not signing up to die next week. But you know what? Should the Lord take me, I'm ready to go. How about you? I want to, I want to see his face. Let's bow our heads for prayer. Lord, we thank you that you meet us at our greatest times of need. And even when we are not aware, you're at work. So, Lord, we don't understand your ways so well, but we know we can trust you. Help us as we take steps of faith today in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, there are things in our world uh, that would astound my grandfather. Or even my great-grandfather, the thing, microwave oven. Do you ever read those little books that says 19-whatever year you were born? There's nobody here for the 18s, right? <laughs> if you were born this year, these are the things that happened, and here's all the stuff that has transpired since you've been alive. And you're going like, wow. I remember when I was in high school, we had computers. Actually, we, had, we started early at my school. And the computer that I have in my laptop is more powerful than the one they had in this entire like two-story building. That's a lot of change. We have a tendency to be so connected to one another. I am not on Facebook. Don't take this personally. I really don't want you to know all the stuff I'm doing or not doing. I went to the grocery store. Big deal. Get a life. <laughs> you know, I, I changed the sheets in the bed. Thank God. <laughs> Why do you put that on the paper? Why do you put that there forever? And some people think no one else is paying attention and they read. And then the employers say, we want your... I wouldn't give it. Of course, I don't have one, so <laughs> I'm safe. My employer sees everything I do. <laughs> there are no secrets. He doesn't even need the code. We live in a world of instant communication. We can travel around the globe 
<laughs> at the drop of a hat, and now the one movie star is going to space, I think we should leave him there? Thought. And we have probably, we are busier and we are more productive in a shorter period of time. But I don't care if you're a farmer, you can't make that seed sprout any sooner. There are certain limitations in this world that you and I cannot change. You know, you can try to cut the cocoon and get that butterfly out, but you just kill that little butterfly. So much if we could just kill the moths, we'd be happy, you know. Research can add years to your life. One of our general superintendents said to me one time, he told me if I gave up ice cream, I could live another three months. He said, in, in Maranatha is the Assembly of God retirement. It's three more months in Maranatha Village. Don't thrill me. I'm having ice cream. And there's a tremendous justification, but I, I won't go. But here's the thing. People still, in all of our complexity and all our connectedness and all the, quote, smarts that we have. It doesn't change death. Should the Lord tarry his coming, you are not getting out here alive. Me neither. I'm not exempted, by the way. You talk about death and people say, um, <clears throat> we, uh, well, they passed away. Uh, they're sleeping. Uh, you know, we, you know uh, we pretend that maybe if we don't talk about it, it'll go away. Uh, I have bad news for you. Death is final. The good news is, or the bad news is you still have to pay income tax after you're dead. Just found that out. Death does some terrible things to us. It deprives us of our parents. Takes away lifelong companions. I ran into our former district superintendent and he was wandering around Walmart. He said, how are you doing, Brother B? He says, okay. He says, I miss Jeanette. We were married 59 years. I said, did you talk to her today? He goes, a couple times. He shared life with her so much it was just unnormal, unusual to not talk to her. I said, don't worry, you're not losing your noodle. But you know what? That's a hard thing to go through. Losing children, some of you have lost children, some of you have lost family members, close friends. And death causes us to adjust to a new reality and just as we think we get that, then the rules of the game change. Someone else dies and... It's very disconcerting. My brothers and I were probating my mother's will, and the people at the county courthouse says, hey, that signature is one of the lawyers. I said, great. They recognized me. They said, but you have to have an affidavit to prove that it's their signature. You know who they are. You told us who it was. You know, some things are just stupid. Sometimes death is stupid. You think about it. It changes everything. John chapter 11 covers a lot of this and it hopefully offers us some hope in the midst of death. John chapter 11 was not just an accidental passage here. It was put in here for our understanding so that the Lord could tell us that what we do in this life has significance and how we die has significance and we can be courageous and we can be calm and we can be in the hands of the Lord and die. Hmm. So what's this whole passage talking about? Let's look at it. You know, I, I, was, I was zipped through this morning. I'm kettering shorter uh, passage here. Lazarus' his sister, Mary, sisters Mary and Martha lived in Bethany. Uh, the sister sent word he's sick. Verse 4, look at verse 4 with me, John chapter. When Jesus heard that, he said, this sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. Remember, that word glorified means to make known who God is. Got it? So he tells him, did Jesus know what was going to happen? He knew. He knew bad stuff was coming. See, when we have bad stuff happen to us, I want you to know God's not captured by surprise. 
That gives me great hope. God has a plan for you and he has provided for you when you trust him and you love who his son is, Jesus. And, he, and, and Lazarus did. So it says in verse 5, Jesus loved them. But then it says, this is a weird verse, verse 6, and he stayed for another two days. I'm not going. And, and you're going like, whoa. And, and then and verse 7 says, finally, after two days he goes. And I think this is really great. Verse 8. His disciples said to the master, the Jews of late sought to stone thee. Go thou thither again. Do you want to go back where they tried to kill you? You know, Jesus will go where he's not welcome to be at the right place at the right time. I think it's so great. How many know who Doubting Thomas is? Here, Doubting Thomas is not a doubter. Listen, uh, verse 9 says, and this is Kettering translation, Jesus said, sure, let's go. And he says, our friend, our friend sleeps. Yeah, and I'll awaken him. Jesus already still knew what he was going to do. He knew ahead of time. Uh, he knew that, verse 13, just so you know, he knew that Lazarus was dead. Verse 14, Lazarus is dead. Just in case you missed it, verse 13. And he says, verse 15, let's go anyway. Verse 16, Thomas says, I am all in. If he's dying, I'm going for the ride. Does that sound like a doubter to you? That sounds like a guy that's pretty courageous. He says, let us go that we can die with him. I'm ready to go. I don't, I don't detect a fear. You know why? He was not afraid to die if Jesus was with him. Or if back up, if he was with Jesus. <laughs> he said, let's go. We have a different picture of Thomas, but he wasn't always the certain way. He shows up, verse 17 says, Lazarus is four days dead. Verse 19, everybody was comforted. Saying, oh, he shouldn't have died. Verse 20, Mar Martha met Jesus, Mary, by herself. And listen, in verse 20, oh, no, verse 21, Martha said, Lord, if you'd been here, my brother wouldn't have died. And I know that even now, whatever you will ask of God, God will give thee. It almost sounds like she says, Hey, you can resurrect him from the dead. Not what she meant. But she, it almost sounds that way. And so she, she lays it all out there. And you get down to verse 23. And Jesus said to her, Hey, your brother will rise again. She goes, Yeah, I know. I know. Someday. In the midst of that, Jesus says, I am the resurrection. The resurrection is here right now. Verse 28. She said, I believe, you know, I believe you're the Christ, Son of God. Blah, blah, blah. And he said, Mary, send Mary. So they sent for Mary. Mary and Martha talked together. Verse 32, she asked the same question that Martha asked. You know, <laughs> so where were you? And then Jesus does this uh, tremendous Thing. He walks to where they laid him. He takes power over the death. He, the stone is rolled away. Lazarus come forth. And uh, he, he sort of takes a moment, sets it up. I told you that this is for the glory of God. And uh, he thanks the Father. And the idea was that they would believe in the Son. Lazarus come forth. Lose him, let him go. They do. Verse 45. Then many of the Jews came to Mary and had seen the things which Jesus did, believed on him. That was the object, wasn't it? But some of them went their way to the Pharisees. You know, there's always some people who will not accept the miracle. You know, it's amazing to me how people interpret stuff. And the Pharisees get some wild interpretation here. It says some people believed in Jesus... But the chief priests and the, and the Pharisees, how does this impact us? Now, there are two ways that you can see this. You can see this as, wow, they really searched their soul, but they really had the greatest American question, what's in it for me? 
because I didn't experience the healing, therefore it had to be bogus, number one. And number two, he's just going to, the man is going to take away our power. He's going to ask for an offering to support his ministry, and we're not going to get any money at the temple. They, it, they felt it with their wallet. They said, you know what? Ah, the Romans are going to come and take away our land. What kind of weird interpretation is this? They are not even amazed that Jesus has brought someone back from the dead, that the Messiah has come, that the answers to all their prayers were there. They go, no, I can't do that. I, do you ever read them like this? I, I just, as I was reading through this morning, I said, these guys were dumb as a rock. Well, I, and then you look in the mirror. Hello, Stoney. You know? You look in the mirror and you say, how many times didn't I get it? When Jesus was in the verge, he had done a miracle. He had done what he had, whatever. Just skip on down to verse 50. 50. Now consider that it's expedient for us. It's the best thing for us that one man should die. Let's kill him. Jesus is a miracle and he's going to get killed for it. And they didn't even like Lazarus. They said, we better cover this up and get rid of him too. You know, death is part of life just like birth is. In Lazarus' case and your case, death, this is some, some takeaways I want to give you before I start preaching, sort of. Death is not the end. Death is was really what happened is death was so overcome by life that life went out. Lazarus, come forth. Life is here. And Lazarus came forth. Death was not as powerful as life. Elsewhere in, in the book of Revelation, it describes Jesus as having the keys of death and hell. The two things that people fear the most. But people don't fear hell too much anymore. In fact, the stupid answer is, well, I'll just go and be my friends. Son, if you say that, you don't know what or Lady, if you say that, you don't know what hell will be like. No one in their right mind wants to go to hell. Everybody should want to go to heaven. If we have a proper understanding. That's just fact. Why would someone choose hell? When they have the opportunity for heaven. Logic escapes me at this time. I don't understand why people say, I'd rather die and go to hell than to enjoy the pleasures of God forevermore. Uh, that just doesn't make sense to me. Now, maybe it's because I'm right with God and God has forgiven me of my sin, but I, I want you to know that hell is for real and resurrection life is available now. We're talking, uh, we can already sing He Lives. We're going to celebrate Easter in a couple of weeks, but it really is in the rearview mirror of our existence. It already has occurred. One thing I know, to get from here in this life to eternity, some kind of change has to take place. Paul writes about that in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. He says, this corruptible that has been tainted by sin has to get a, a, a change, a glorified body. Something has to happen. And the only way is to I cash in this old body or to be taken and be changed in the twinkling of an eye. We get two options. So far, in my knowledge, the Lord has not returned to his bride. Sorry, Jehovah Witness. They believe in 1914 Jesus came back and the rest of us are goners, I guess. I don't know. All I can tell you is my Savior is alive today and he's coming back for me. And if I lay it down in this life, I'm going to beat the people who are alive. The dead in Christ will rise first. What I want you to know in this whole context is Jesus has the power over death right now. We took time to pray. Why? Because I believe that. We believe that. And even though we, you know, it would be my desire that everything would work out and everybody would be healed, I realize that that's not reality. Because should the Lord tarry somewhere, sometime, I'm going to die of something. I want God to be with me in those times too. 
But I want you to see another picture beside Jesus is the Lord over death and, and he knows what's going on. He's aware. I want you to see in there the, the shortest verse in, in English. Actually, the shortest word in Greek is rejoice evermore. The shortest verse in, in English is Jesus wept. Usually if you, most of us learned that and we've got it nailed. John eleven thirty five. What does that tell us about this Savior? It tells me that he cares for me. He cared about Mary and Martha. He cared about Lazarus. And he was moved. Now, I can give you 500 reasons why. Well, not that many. I can give you a few reasons why I think he cried. Part of it was I think he cried because he tried to tell them so many times and they just weren't getting it. They were thick as a brick. They didn't get what he was saying. Hey, he's, he's asleep. And then John says, he meant dead. And then he says to Mary, hey, uh, can this guy live again? Oh, yes, some, someday. But she didn't think he would do it now. This flies in the face of all the people that say, if you have enough faith. Lazarus had no faith. Mary and Martha didn't come to equip either. But Jesus showed up and that was all that needed to happen. I want you to know something. Your faith quotient may be that small, but if your God is this big, anything can happen. My God is this big. He is not waiting for me, but tell you what, it is so sweet when I walk in relationship and conjunction with him. When I'm taking, taking steps of faith and believing him in his word, I get blessed in the process. But he can do it without me. It's a shame he's got to do things in spite of us. Shows that Jesus' compassion, his sympathetic heart, he was moved by their sorrow. He was moved by their loss. He, by the way, these two girls had no income without Lazarus because men were the primary breadwinners. If they're praying, oh, give us this day our daily bread. Their daily breadwinner just died. They had some money, wherewithal, I'm sure. But that only lasts so long. They didn't have uh, any kind of social assistance program or take care of the widow's fund. So they were mourning a lot of loss. Economic, beside relationship, status in the community, reputation. A lot of stuff they were mourning. Talked to a friend of mine who was mourning and I said, you know, sometimes it's hard... For me to mourn because I just don't take time to feel sorry for myself. And the person looking at me says, all I do is I feel sorry for myself. I said, I'm not meaning that as a bust. I, just, I said, you know what? I've got too much to do to, to wait. They said, all my future is gone. All this is gone. All that's gone. I said, is it? Is your whole future gone just because everything has changed? No, it's not. Because my God doesn't start to be my God when I die. My limitations to understanding his presence get smaller because then I'll see him face to face. My relationship will morph and change. I need a glorified body because if I'm getting into the presence of God who is holy, I don't want to get crispy crittered because he's holy and he demands that I would be holy. So we see some of the character of what God cares about. He cares for you. And he cares for me. I'm, I'm thinking as I'm preaching this, a lot of us have experienced loss in the last year or two. Someone near and dear has passed away. We've, some have lost jobs. Some have lost health. A loss of something and we sometimes think, well, maybe God's not paying attention. Maybe Remember at the very beginning it says Jesus loved them. So it's not a matter that Lazarus died because he didn't love him. There are some people who say, well, if you love the Lord enough, then everything will go your way. Baloney. Let me give you the original Greek. Baloney. The rain falls on the just and the unjust. And how you and I go through these things it's to bring glory to God. We are revealing God. Fred was talking at the, at the diner. And the other people were noticing. Going like, 
That guy's God is real. Just think how, Fred probably was not aware that he was messing with him. He was just saying, hey, they ask how I'm coping, they say I'm coping. But God was being glorified. He was being made known to those people. And maybe a way that they could have never experienced him. See, we often want God to say, oh, out of this I want to come. And he said, let me leave you in there and I'll sustain you while you're going through. Blessed be the God of all comfort who comforts us in all of our affliction. So in turn, we may comfort those who are being similarly afflicted. Because there are people, sometimes you're going through stuff not because you did a thing wrong. But it's so that God will be glorified. As I'm going through some stuff, of course, none of us carry any burdens, do we? How we go through is just as important as getting to the end. I will tell you this, God knows where you are. He loved Lazarus. He knew, he knew before anybody else did what he was going to do. He was not captured by surprise and he knows where we are today, church. I'm glad for that. See, this is, this is not going to sell a lot of books. But this is real stuff. I don't know the burden that you're carrying. But I know someone who does. I have my own stuff to carry. Huh? And you have yours. And I bear your burden through prayer. Through care, concern. We do that. But you know what? It's easier for me to bear a burden because I'm casting my care on the Lord. I'm trusting that God is coming through. So, what were the results the results were that many believed. Listen to me, whatever we're going through today, if the results are many believed, that means God got the glory. That means that you did it well. It is important. Our world has an axiom that says, the end justifies the means, and I don't believe that at all. How you get there is just as important as the destination that you're going to. I'm headed for heaven, and I'm not going to buy my way in. I'm not going to cheat my way in, and I'm not going to steal my way in. I'm only getting in by the blood of Jesus and his grace for me. John chapter 11, verse 15. This whole incident occurred... Look at verse 15. I am glad for your sakes I was not there. To the intent ye may believe, nevertheless let us go unto him. The whole idea of this exercise is so the disciples would know that they would have a practical application. He did it and he can do it again. And so you get these guys going into the temple and Peter and John and he says, Hey, I don't have any money but I'm going to give you what I got. And it changed that lame man, crippled man's life forever. Where do you think he got infused with some of that? I mean, some of the day of Pentecost, I'm sure. But he realized that there's a God in heaven who can do anything. That's what we prayed for today. A God who can do anything. Matthew, or John chapter 11, verse 26. Do you have faith to believe, Martha? See, if you believed, skip on down to verse 40. Jesus said, I not unto thee, that if thou wouldst believe, thou should see the glory of God. Remember what brings God glory is to make him known. If you believe, you will bring glory to God. You will go through trusting God. Hey, I'm not saying that's easy. You get all kind of words. Oh, by the way, you have just been downsized. You have no job. Leave today. You can go today. We'll pay you through Friday. Good luck. You're just getting ready to go on vacation. You were counting on that paycheck. Whoa. What am I going to do? How am I going to pay my bills? And you say to yourself, self, 
who else has the words of eternal life? I guess I'm going with Jesus on this deal. Is he my, really my Jehovah Jireh? Is he the one who provides my every need? Or did that job provide for my, my God? Will supply all your needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Jesus' prayer reveals the purpose behind the miracle. Listen to verse 42. I love the way he prays. And I knew that thou hearest me always. He's talking about to the Father. But because of the people which stand by, I said it that they may believe that thou hast sent me. I did all these things so that others would believe. I walked into that. Lazarus died so that others would believe. We sometimes say, well, I'll give some money so others believe. What would you be willing to do for your family to come to the Lord? Greater love hath no man that he lay down his life for his friend. Scarcely would a man lay down his life, but perhaps maybe a few. What, was, what would you say if the end result of whatever you're going through Causes other people to say, you know what, if your God is that good to you, I want to embrace him as my savior. Would it then be worth it? Oh, we, give a, we do a great crusade and we say, be worth it if just one soul comes to the Lord. And it, that didn't cost us much. It cost a couple bucks. But when it comes down for you and I paying the price, you know, I, I, I just say it like this. If we're going to be like Jesus, church, whatever we go through, we want the world to know our God is alive. Our God is alive. Hey, you know what? That drunk driver might take me out. My God is still alive. Job says it like this, yet though he slay me, like God's going to do that. But even at the nth degree, if he's like, yet I'm serving him. I'm trusting him. Boy, that's, that is a commitment that we want to make and in the heat of battle we can make by the grace of God. We can determine ahead of time what we're going to do. I choose to give glory to God. I choose to trust in the Lord. I choose to go through for the glory of God. And if he delivers me, what the three Hebrews? And if he takes a saddle of fire, fine. But let me know. Hey, Nebuchadnezzar. Hey, king. Hey, let me tell you something. I'm not bowing my knee to your stupid idol anyhow. And if I get crispy crittered in the fire, so be it. And God spared them, but he didn't spare. By the way, Daniel went into the lion's den too, didn't he? And you and I are going to go through some stuff. But the testimony of the faithfulness and the keeping power of God will long supersede your existence here on the earth. Other people will say their God was real. Oh, didn't they get discouraged? Oh, yeah, they had some down times till God picked them up and encouraged them. Our testimony of the faithfulness. By the way, Lazarus' testimony was, I'm alive. I just wonder what it was like to die a second time. Not that I'm signing up for the tour, sure, but, you know, I wonder if Lazarus had any problem dying the second time. Some of you are going like, your pastor is whacked out. I'm sorry. I just, I, 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 those kind of things intrigue me. Oh, death, where is thy sting? Oh, grave, where is thy victory, Paul writes. Because I want to be in the presence of the Lord. I've got to get there somehow. We sing a song, oh, I want to see him look upon his face. And we're going like, but I really don't want to die. Can we work, can we do another deal here? How many know that God will give you the grace that you need for every situation if you call upon him? 
I love the Pharisee's response. If we let him alone, everybody will believe. Like that's a threat. If everybody believes on Jesus, wouldn't that be great? Just imagine how much we would send, save in defense spending. If everybody believed in Jesus, how much uh, we could close down the Department of Welfare because people would act with Christ's compassion. Just a thought. If everybody believed uh, what Jesus could do in their life, uh, we wouldn't have to worry about immigration. We could open the borders. If we would trust people. We could, pardon me, but some cops could be laid off. They might do something. They wouldn't have to worry about, you couldn't pay me enough to put one of those suits on. Man, I'm a big target. Man, they shoot at cops. Oh, no, thanks. Uh-uh. Thank you to all the policemen and police women. If he, if this gets out, we're going to lose our political power. This is where the problem was. And this is the problem for every non-believer. If I acknowledge him as Savior, I have to give up my own rights. And they didn't want to do that. You know what? Many believed. Not everybody believed. That still wonders me. But we're, we're going on. I want you to know that Jesus was not bothered by death. I don't think it took all of God's power to raise Lazarus from the dead. In fact, later on, Jesus makes this bold statement. Hey, by the way, I have power to lay my life down and I pick it up again. That astounds me. I, I, I'm working on that still. What do I conclude? I, be, I believe that life continues beyond death, that de death is not the end all be all. Death is only temporary separation from the ones here, but it is permanent reuniting in the presence of the Lord for all time and eternity. You've got to trade it in somehow to get eternity. And Jesus says, those who trust in me, do you believe it? Will never die, yet shall he live. Can I put it to you like this? Those who never trust in Christ will never see life now or later. Life, I mean, worthwhile existence. But you and I who know the Lord now, we can have his life today and in the future. It's not all pie in the sky by and by. We can have his presence lead and guide us and we can have eternal life and live like it in this life. Before death. And then we just take one breath from here and one breath from there. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Life that's eternal. Do you have it? Bow your heads with me, please. Heavenly Father, we're glad that you chose to reveal to us your concern for us at death and your provision for life. Life that can start right now. If we confess you with our mouth and we believe in our heart that you are the Son of God, we will have eternal life. Not just later, but right now. We need that life today. We need your life today. This morning I just say to you in the church, have you embraced that life? We're coming to the resurrection. Are you living today with resurrection power already in your life? Or do you need Jesus to walk by and say, come out of that grave? You say, well, I asked the Lord into my life, but I'm not where I want to be. I want you to know he'll still call your name and he'll still give you his power and his strength. You're not right with God. Today you want to ask him to be your savior. You raise your hand. I will pray for you. We'll make sure you get followed up. Make sure you get in the right path. We want you to know Jesus. We believe in resurrection life today. 
Some of us are pooped out, tired out, worn out. We believe what everybody has told us. And the Spirit says, you know what? I've got some resurrection life for you today. And you say, hey, I need that. The good news is as a believer, you can have resurrection life today. All the time. That fear can go. That peace can come. And you say, hey, that's me today. I just need a fresh dose of resurrection life. I need encouragement. I need his hope today. And you'd be honest and say, that's me. Raise your hand. We're going to just pray. There's nothing wrong with that. You know what? It's your privilege as a believer. Amen. Several hands going up. Anybody else? You just want to get on it. We're going to ask the Lord to bring resurrection life into us. We're getting excited about Easter, but I'm excited that he is here now. His power is available to all who will believe. Lord, we believe your word. Sometimes our experience is uh, trying to catch up with what we know to be true. We know that in our mind that eternity with you is a great thing, <laughs> but we're afraid to live for you now. Lord, there are some times that we have been sucker punched and beat up and drugged behind the old pickup truck down through the yard, and it's hurt. We come to you wounded and beat up. And we're just reaching out with one last hand saying, God, here I am. I need your resurrection life. I need eternal life to touch this mortal body and make it alive and quicken it. Just like the same spirit that raised Christ and the dead would just make alive my body. We prayed for healing in many bodies today. Lord, we come because of your love for us, your provision, and the same spirit that re-energized a lifeless, inanimate corpse is available to us today. That blood that Jesus shed on the cross for our sins and for our healing. We ask that you would pour into our bodies, into our minds, into our spirits, and bring resurrection life to us, we pray. You really are all we need. I'm going to ask if you will stand with me. And we're going to sing a little chorus that says, I'll live for him who died for me. If that's your desire and you're saying, I don't have the power to pull this off, you're in good company. Because we're totally dependent on the Lord to live a godly life. He'll help us. You say, by faith, I'm going to live. As you sing it, I believe God's going to do that in, that in our lives today. Sing that song with me. I'll live for him who died for me. How happy now my life shall be. I'll live for him who died for me. My Savior and my God. I changed that word. I'll live for him who died for me. How happy now my life shall be. I'll live for him who died for me. My Savior and my God. Lord, the best that we can do in our own strength doesn't match the great need in our lives. When we sing a song like that, we're saying, Lord, I am totally dependent on you for life with my best effort. But I need your strength. I need your power. I need divine infusion of life. I pray for every soul that's paying attention today. Lord God, even when we don't have faith, Lazarus had no faith. He was dead. But Jesus passed by. The giver of life. I pray that you would impart life to us today in divine ways. Encourage us for everything that we do, we want to bring glory to you. We want the world to know who Jesus is. Help us as we live for you. And then we'll die for you the right way too. Thank you for your word that brings hope today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.